And once again, from that hot bed of golf croquet in the U.S., the mountains of North Carolina, where Highlands Falls, High Hampton, Chattooga, and Sapphire Valley Croquet Clubs have gotten together to host the USCA Golf Croquet Nationals in 2022. We're back to Sapphire Valley today for a continuation of a quarterfinal match in the singles knockout. We'll be on court two, the one at the bottom there. These nationals take a lot of people to put on, and we can only name a few. Your tournament director is Jeff Sue, ably assisted by Eileen Sue and Mike Albert. Mike Albert is also the tournament manager, and Paul Newbecker is on the video camera. This event is put on and sponsored by the United States Croquet Association, which is also the sponsor of this channel now. From the USCA, you can get everything you need to know about getting involved in this marvelous sport of ours. This game is the continuation of the singles knockout match between Matthew Essick and Stephen Morgan. Game one was pretty much back and forth. Fabulous shooting. Went to hoop 13. Game two... The shooting fell off a little bit, but Matthew was in a zone around the hoops and took it 7-5 to tie everything up. So this is the tiebreaker, Game 3, which will be our last game from Sapphire Valley. Because Matthew won with blues, Steven starts Game 3 with red. You remember we had a delay for lightning in game two, but the weather's cleared up now with no threat in sight. That's really good. He has a good one. Good. And he has a good picture. I'm guessing that he switched to Solomon because he wants to hit it harder to get down to hoop two. I'm going to ask him to find out. That's the one you can turn again. <coughs>
He wants Red to have a hoop shot, but not give Blue an in off if he's still there to clear it in two turns. I assume they're playing Dawson balls, which are incredibly durable, but those balls are taking a beating, bouncing off that stone wall like that. Steven certainly didn't expect to have this opportunity. A hoop's a hoop, but he was trying to jaws that for the odd-numbered hoop advantage, which just means that on all the odd-numbered hoops, the next hoop is on the line of the odd-numbered hoop shot, so you can set up with it and maybe get two hoops in a row. Red's a long way away, and blue and black are both well positioned, so take the hoop shot.
looks like an in-off opportunity to me. We're not playing eight ball. He doesn't have to call it. What if that was intentional? Only Steven will ever know. I think yellow. I think he was probably going for an off there. I had to guess, but it uh, worked out. Stevens' play is exemplary so far. Matthews had what you might call a couple of uncharacteristic misses, and Stevens got a significant lead. Pretty sure blue has a shot on red, but he's ahead and he doesn't want to put his balls way out of position for the next hoop, even if he loses this one. And if blue's off sides, Matthew definitely wants to make seven on this next stroke. Demonstrating that he's human after all. Thank you. 
I think this next bit is worth noting. When you're trying to line up balls that are so close together, it's sometimes better just to bounce them off each other than to try to primarily position red in this instance. And because you're hitting him so gently, a double tap's not much of a risk. He's not lining up a rush on red here, so I think his disappointment such as it is it's just the yellow didn't get all the way down to eight Red misses the ball and the hoop by equal amounts. I can't tell what she's shooting at. Enough with the humanity, Matthew. This is hoop nine, so he's going to jaws it. And I've got to petition the OED to recognize jaws as a verb. Wiley used it in print in the mid 80s. Red was cleared to the east boundary on the last turn, and Matthew's just staying over there. He's not coming out on the lawn, maybe because he likes the angle from the boundary better for clearances at hoop 10. Of course, the hope is that you make hoop 10 on this shot, not just set up for it.
I cannot tell what Matthew's lining up here. The hoop shot's going to go close to where he's standing, but why that matters, I don't know. And now it's anybody's game. And that should be the match. These guys don't stalk the ball a lot, but this is important. Oh my God, what do I call this? Serial magnanimity or one bad shot deserves another? They would probably both prefer that I edit those last two shots out. But come on, guys, you're demonstrating to the rest of us that anything is possible, even against players like you. If you look back at Yellow's hoop shot, Matthew did check. These balls are probably in contact, so there's no risk of a double tap here.
this for the match again. It's really Steven's call where that ball gets marked in, but they trust each other implicitly. And black is legally offsides down by 13, having cleared yellow. So there's no way he's going to make this hoop with red. Check out Clark Croquet for a discussion of Hoop 12 Tactics by Chris Clark. This is one of the more important, setting up for a northward rush on partner after Hoop 12. Tidying up the rush and hoping that blue misses red. This is the first long rush, a partner to the next hoop I've seen these guys do. But if he didn't do this, he was going to lose this game unless Red had been able to clear black from 60 feet away. Because there was no way Steven was missing that short hoop shot again. And as well as this is working out defensively for Matthew, it does demonstrate why they don't do those long partner rushes very often, because then it takes an extra turn to get all your troops in position. No pressure here, just his second shot for the match in the last 10 minutes. Match point number three.
Number four. Match point number five. He put blue exactly where he wanted to. Gifted hoop is something the rules have been rewritten about three times to prevent after wrong ball play. I think that's what a gifted hoop really is. And in a heartwarming display of humanity and generosity, Stephen Morgan scores the winning point for Matthew Essick, who moves on from the quarterfinals. Stephen's <laughs> take on this phenomenon is summarized here. He's holding his third place trophy from the doubles competition. Matthew's next match is a semi against Tom Balding, and we have that as well as the semi between Sharif and Blake Fields, and the final all coming from Highlands Falls. So we say goodbye to Sapphire Valley, Suggest you check out the USCA website, subscribe, give us a like, and hit that notification bell. There's more coming up.